Pure, pure, pure boys podcast. You open your app, then listen to us, yeah. On and on and on, talking Christian movies, cause it's just the pure, pure, pure boys podcast. Pure, pure, pure boys podcast. Pure, pure, pure boys podcast. Oh, doggy! If you want to know what a Christian V for Vendetta superhero movie looks like, have we got a treat for you this week? Right? Yes, I super picky. Yes, I super picky. Listeners, you don't know what we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> but Check get- out our Twitter, though. Then you'll know. Because what? Yes, we we super picky. Well, yes, I super picky. It's from a review for Devil Sticks, and we are all about Devil Sticks here on Pure Boys. Hey, what up? Welcome to Pure Boys Podcast. I'm Zachariah Ty Bryant. And I am Jonathan Toiler Toiler. And we are both wearing hats and sunglasses indoors because we are super cool. You should have seen how many dabs we were doing during that intro. It was dope. Yeah, my mic is super close to my face and my whole uh, setup, and I don't have dab room. You, well, you have like a seat that you can get back and dab. Yeah, I got a I got a wheelie chair. I got a wheelchair. Ooh. I'm in a wheelchair. Listeners, in case you're wondering anything, we don't really reveal a lot about ourselves on the show, but if you're wondering something about Zachary Ty Bryant, it's that I'm in a wheelchair right now. So it's just the way the cards <laughs> fall. Not because you have any problems walking or anything. No, it's just easier for being in an office. You just got to have a wheelie chair, and it squeaks and it squonks, and you can hear it on the mic, so... And you have saline directly dripping into your veins. Yeah, yeah, but that's for unrelated reasons. That's because I'm I'm an addict. A sex addict. (laughs) All right, well, come on. (laughs) Pure Flakes, hit us up at any time. (laughs) Well, that's why you need all the fluids and the saline, so you can pump your balls full of cement. (laughs) <laughs> flush it out. Give me a go, a full body flush. I drank a. <laughs> I drank a big coffee right before this. I'm feeling wired and ready to talk about the 2015 four million dollar budget Beyond the Mask. Ooh, not Beyond the Meat. No. Don't get twisted. Don't pull out your meat and say what's beyond this. Nothing, baby. <laughs> That's the final stop. The- there is a lot of meat in this movie, though, and a lot of oh, bones yeah, yeah. to pick off. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> shag me rotten. Shag me, shag God rotten, baby. Uh, listeners, Devil Sticks, we love them. Head to our Twitter, and you'll see a tweet where we share a link to a review of Devil Sticks, where at the end, this presumably burnt out, you know, hula hooping, Swiss cheese brained mountain girl says yes I super picky and we've <laughs> we've co-opted that as our catchphrase because yes I super picky but that's how you know she's honest trustworthy and a good consumer is because at the end of her review she tagged it with yes I super picky in all caps yes I super picky <laughs> yes I super picky especially when it comes to devil sticks <laughs> Oh, <laughs> maybe that's the only thing she's super picky in, though. Maybe everything else she's like, I don't care. Just th- throw it at me. But devil sticks? Oh, yes, I super picky when it comes to those, for sure. I would definitely subscribe to a blog that was a review uh, blog, and it was okay. called Yes, I Super Picky. Cause <laughs> we can make one. Then I know I'm going to get an honest review, and I'm going to get to the nuts and bolts of the situation. I mean, Pure Boys is a great name for our podcast, but should we just drop it and rename ourselves Yes, I Super Picky, and it's just all about Christian movies? <laughs> and Yes, I Super Picky with the Christian movies I watch. And yes, we super picky about everything. Yeah. We could review it. The sky's the limit after that. Exactly. Just as long as we super picky <laughs> about it, then it's fine. Yes, comma, like I, I super picky. <laughs> like that would grab attention to people on the, uh, you know, the Apple podcast, the Spotify's. Yeah, I feel like our name and and logo and all of that stuff isn't tricking as many people as I thought it would. It's tricking, it's tricked a few people in the Philippines, but it hasn't tricked enough people here to really make a dent in our wallets yet. So, yes, I super Argentina, picky. Argentina, South Africa, but it's one and done. We got some listeners in Johannesburg. You know, we got listeners all over the world. That's not a joke. We I have was- listeners in Johannesburg. <laughs> I was so excited to see that we had a listener in Johannesburg. I I was read a book uh, to myself. And <laughs> yes, I super picky. Me. I was read a book. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, it was about Johannesburg in South uh, Africa. And for some oh. reason, I have this uh, very strong connection to Johannesburg. So if you are listening, I love you and I want to stay at your house for at least a week. That's true. And you love the movie Chappie. So that I think that takes place in Johannesburg <sighs> or whatever. Shirley Little Copley's from there so or something like that. He's South African or something, whatever. Yeah, Chappie is very South African. Oh, for sure he is. You haven't seen Chappie. What do you even, do you even know who Di Antwoord is? You don't even know. I have not seen it, but I do know he's South African. Don't ask me why, though. They're stealing PlayStation 4s. Picky. They're stealing PlayStation 4s in that movie. Can you even believe that? how big of a heist that is? I cannot believe that. And there weren't even 2000, I mean, PS5s? I don't know why no, I said no. 2000. Chappie came out in, like, 2015 or something like that. Maybe even earlier. I don't even know how long Chappie came out. And it wasn't about the future? They were saying Chappie now? Oh, that's a good point, hey? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I didn't even consider that. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I assume it's Chappie now. Yes, I super picky. Chappie now. <laughs> okay. Pure Boys is dead. <laughs> Pure Boys yes, is dead. super picky. Yeah. Rest in peace, Pure Boys. Welcome to the fold. Yes, I super picky. I will change. Don't don't test me. I will change all of our logos and branding and everything to yes, I super picky. I I'm into it. I'll tell you what. Um, why don't we sit on it for a minute and then we should sleep on it. Once we wrap up Malibu Dan, the Family Man, maybe we could introduce another sub show called Yes, I Super Picky, where we review like crucifixes and like cool Jesus clothing and you know stuff like that. Well, yes, I super picky, but also maybe if, unless one person emails us and tells us to keep the name of this show. Ooh, that's uh, a tough one. No one's going to do that. No one's going to do that. I'm telling you that right now. Nobody follows us on Twitter. Nobody sends us emails. We lie all the time when we say that people are. Nobody is. So I think, yes, I super picky. Well, this is our shot to get an email, I think. That's true. And, oh, man, if there's anything you and I know about, it's shooting our shot. That's for sure. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we we should not shoot our shot. No. Pure Boys is a brand that we have uh, cultivated. Exactly. And, hey, if you're listening to the show and you love Pure Boys or Yes, I Super Picky, whatever, it, whatever the show is called by the time you hear this, uh, maybe you listen to it 10 years in the future and the show Yes, I Super Picky is on all the major networks and it's a huge thing at this point. Maybe, maybe not. But wherever you're listening to it, go to Apple Podcasts. <laughs> wherever you're listening to it, stop listening to it on that. Go to Apple Podcasts, rate us five stars, write a little review. But yes, I super picky in the review so we know it's legit and not just us or one of our friends writing it. Or if you're one of our friends, do another one, whatever. It's all good. And yeah. then, uh, you know, maybe we'll trick some Christians to listen to this show. Maybe. I just want one email from a random person. Just say sup. Just pureboyspod at gmail.com. There's no ah in there. It's just pureboyspod at gmail.com. It's, it, it, send an email to yesisuperpicky at gmail.com. I'm going to set that email up right now yeah, so we don't lose we gotta it. we got to look for it. Yeah. I race to a finish, you know what I mean? For sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, here, I'll tell you what. While, while I get this set up, why don't yeah. you bust into everyone's favorite segment, and I'll get this thing going here, okay? God, I hate his tweets lately. I know. His tweets have been obnoxious as frick. It makes me just go like, yeah. man, I... I can't stand you, Kev, but here we are. We love it. This is everyone's favorite segment. The Kevin Sorbo Read of the Week. All right. Wait, wait, uh, I got to turn it down. Wait. Wait a minute. What? What? Wait? It's too loud. I can't hear you. I need to turn it down. Hang on. Frick. There we go. Sorry, bud. There you go. Is it too quiet now? No, it's perfect now. Okay, okay, let's uh, let's get on with the show then. Mm. The uh, tweet from K Sorbs is Kamala Harris is scary. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> I saw that, I saw that. That's a good one. Yeah, out of what he's been tweeting, I don't even want to like touch on anything else that he's tweeting about. No, give us uh, another this one. This was the closest one to being kind of. Give us another one. Read it, read another one. Give us another one. <laughs> no way. Yes. I'm not touching another one you whatsoever. Have to. I can talk about how sexy Kamala Harris is for at least a couple of minutes. Okay, yeah, vamp for a little bit. I'm almost done signing up for yes, I super picky at gmail.com. Is it available? Yeah, of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? 
I I figure anything that is just two or three words in a row has been picked already. That's fair, including yeah. yes, I super picky. Uh, birthday September eleventh, two thousand and one. Gender Ooh. rather not say. Thank you very much. Still over nineteen. Yeah, yeah, we're good. That's that's why September. It's we live in a magical time where you can use September eleventh, two thousand and one as your birthday for anything. Now you, you don't. There's no limitations on it. It's a beautiful thing. And we respect the fallen. We and we respect the flag, but we will kneel for the national anthem. This is not a political podcast. Which flag? I don't know. Johannesburg, the Chappie flag. <laughs> it's just got a big picture of Chappie on it. Do you think? Yeah, I think so. First name, yes I. Last name, super picky. <laughs> Oh, that has me tickled French. <laughs> well, Kamala Harris is scary. She's a beautiful woman. She's uh, the yep. vice president of some United States. <laughs> Wait. <You> represent <laughs> change and progress. <laughs> because our first name is Yes I, all the emails are going to sound ridiculous because this is what the – when I set up the email account, this is what the, the, the first email we got was. It says, Yes, I finished setting up your new Google account. <laughs> That's really good. Uh, that name resounds with me. Should I change my name to Yes I Super Picky? <laughs> Listeners, if you if you want Jonathan Taylor Taylor to change his name to Yes I Super Picky, tweet at us at Pure Boys Pod on Twitter and at Pure Boys Pod at Gmail dot com, or send any emails to Yes I Super Picky at Gmail dot com. <laughs> We love it. We love it. Whatever, Kevin. Eat, eat, eat your own butt. Eat piss. Yeah, eat, eat pi so much piss that you drown in piss. Wow, that's heavy talk from Yes, I super picky. I don't think. Uh, I don't think Zachariah Ty Ryan supports that kind of thing. I am going to change your name to Yes, I super picky in all of our write ups now. People will go. I don't know what that means. Join host Zachariah Ty Bryant and Yes, I super picky as they explore the world of Christian cinema. That won't make any sense. I just want people to know I don't want anybody to drown in piss. This is uh, brought to you by Case Orbs. <laughs> we love you, Case Orbs. Never stop tweeting. Never change yeah. who you are. Never grow or change as a person. Be stuck as this man for the rest of your days. Do you think he's going to freeze himself? <clears throat> I think he already has. I think a bot is controlling his Twitter account, and Kevin Sorbo has been frozen in, I don't know, Lake Minnetonka for the last 15 years. Yeah, his uh, last instructions, the bot's last instructions was just tweet anything that's crazy right wing and offends <laughs> as much people as possible. Yeah. The tweet, the, the last instructions to the bot that runs his Twitter account were never let up. <laughs> <laughs> never drink milk. God, no. Oh, my. Could you imagine if Chappie drank milk? Oh, my God. The robots would all, they would lose their minds. Yeah, it'd be squirting out of his eyes, and he'd get the uh, Guinness World Record. There you go. That is, well, I thought you said you haven't seen Chappie. It's weird that you would mention that specific scene that happens in Chappie, that very specific plot point where Diane Ward teaches Chappie how to shoot milk out of his eyes so he can get a world record. The whole movie is about whether or not a robot has the right to claim a Guinness World Record. Since it's not, Man. since it was programmed, it's a made thing. Can a robot technically hold a world record since they didn't really choose to do this thing? It's a very complicated movie, but spoiler alert, what in the it? end, he ends yeah. up in the book. So it's pretty nice. He meets Dean Cain. It's a whole thing. It's great. Very intelligent. Very intelligent uh, plot points. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a well-written movie. And for a movie about robots claiming world records, which you'd think would be some kind of B-movie junk, uh, you know, hammer film plot... It actually yeah. holds up pretty well in 2021 and will probably still make you cry as much as it did when you saw it in theaters in 2014. So don't make me cry milk. No, um, that's Ch that's Chappie's catchphrase when he's like when they're, they're threatening to shut him down. He's like, please don't make me cry milk. Don't make me cry milk. Mm -hmm. and he calls people bumble clots because he's like Diane words like they're gangsters, yeah. right? They're like a couple of white Johannesburg gangsters. So you know how it yeah. is. Johannesburg. Exactly. Uh, okay. Feast or famine? Feast or famine? All right. Yes, I super picky. Well, here we go. Let's get into it. Let's. Speaking of yes, I super picky. Not really, but I needed some way to transition into this. Let's go. Let's go. It's time <laughs> to talk about 2015's Beyond the Mask, starring Jamie Kennedy and Jim Carrey. Not true. 
AKA the East India Company takedown. That's right. Hey, East India Company, we're coming for you. The year is 1775, and there's a guy doing stuff for the East India Trading Company in England. Yes. Uh, you know, and they're not doing savory stuff in India. No, no, they're not even doing sweet stuff in India. They're butchering people, <laughs> like, brutally. There's a lot of whipping. Is it whip? Yeah, I guess it is whipping. You're right. There's a lot of muskets being oh, yeah. fired point blank into people's faces. <laughs> William has a very uh, distinct flashback where he's whipping the crap out of somebody. And then he tries to stop himself, and he turns around and is like, <laughs> it's a real Empire Strikes Back moment. Dreams, man. Pfft, for real. Dreams, man. We... Should we do the podcast wearing sunglasses from now on? I feel very cool doing it right now. I feel like a cool guy doing it. I honestly feel like we should uh, videotape this. Do you have a camcorder with VHS capabilities? Uh, I don't, but I have OBS, and I could set it up, and we could pause this and do and I could do the other thing. Next time. It's too much Next now. Time. We're, like, 15 We're minutes into the it. podcast. Yeah, we can't start it in the... Well, that would be pretty funny to put it on youtube where the first 15 minutes is just audio and then in the middle just the video just comes on and now here we are and what's Thank up i feel like i need a bandero you feel like you need some bandera pizza bread are you hungry yes please Ooh, yes i super picky and i need boston pizzas bandero pizza bread please Yes, uh, it's the one thing I still love from Boston Pizza. Everything I hate. What about uh, pierogi stromboli? That was good. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. The teenagers that work there aren't worth it. You know what? That's a very good point. The statute of limitations is passed for this, but I used to steal cutlery from there. I used to have like Ooh. every time I'd go there, I'd take like a couple of pieces of cutlery, and then I just I'd have them in my car, like behind the in, so on the back seats or like on the the back of the front seats there was like a pocket and i just filled it up with cutlery from boston pizza and then one day i went in and just left like 30 pieces of cutlery on the table and then just left <laughs> so you never used it and no. then you returned it on mass exactly yeah it was a That's victimless fun. crime nobody got hurt everybody got their cutlery back and uh some some teenagers that weren't worth it got a little confused and that's it man you're almost as bad as the East India Company. Oh, man, truly. I walked in there, and I shoved a musket right in a teenager's face and pulled that trigger, and, <laughs> and that was the Give me all your cutlery. <laughs> Give me it all. I'm Jonathan Rice Davies. That's his name, right? Is yes. It? Yeah? The guy who plays Gimli. He's, uh, I'm pretty sure yeah. that's Jonathan Rice Davies. The guy yeah. from Sliders. The g Exactly, yeah. The guy from Sliders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerry O'Connell. He's in this. Yeah. <laughs> God, I love Sliders. What is his name? His name doesn't line up to who he is. Who, Jonathan Rice davies That's him. Is it Jonathan? I don't think it's Jonathan. I'm pretty Rice sure it's Jonathan Rice Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's who it is. Hang on, hang on. I I have uh, a different movie open here. Oh, dang it. Hang on. Oh, dang it. Oh, you're looking up the IMDb's? I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at Andrew Cheney, the star of this movie. And a couple other yeah, Christian movies that we'll probably watch at some point. Sorry, it's John really It's right. John Rice Davies. My apologies. Yeah. For some reason, I thought it was like Jean. No, no, no. You're thinking of Wyclef Jean. Uh, See? Yes, I'm like super sticky. I'm an idiot because in my notes, I have John Rice Davies. But then just vamping, I'm saying Jonathan Rice Davies. Why am I? What's wrong with me? I can read my notes. You're clamping up. This, I shouldn't drink a coffee before this. I'm friggin' buzzing over here. You gotta do it during, baby. Hey, a guy lives only to be worthy of Charlotte's respect, you know? Did you think yeah. the first line of the movie was him saying Shaolin? Because it sounded like Shaolin. <laughs> you were uh, getting ready for, like, a an Eastern European type situation? Well, the East India Company. I thought, well, maybe we're going to dip down just a little bit further south and head to Shaolin. <laughs> Well, it it didn't happen. No. And I don't remember that moment. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's just, it's the opening line. Shaolin, there are things you could never know. <laughs> That's so, <laughs> no. That's a cool line from a song if you wanted to put that in something. There was a, uh, are you talking about the voiceover opening for this? Yeah, yeah, the voiceover like opening. The... Yeah, yeah, the VO. 
when there was voiceover, I was su- super excited for you to do that as our intro, but then I was like, it just falls flat. It's not as interesting or as rough, mm-hmm. so it'd be useless to use it at the top of this episode. I mean, I did kind of do it a little bit. Shaolin, there are things you could never know. <laughs> <laughs> there are things you could never know, and there's no way we can get around that. Do True. you think they actually had sniper rifles in 1775? That's the thing. I don't I don't <laughs> think that most of the stuff that happens in this movie actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> they purport that it does. Do they? <laughs> yeah, after the credits roll they're like there was this uh what do they call that thing that collects air energy thing that collects air energy a generator no well I don't, you're the gonna generator have to... does collect it but the the big thing a windmill goes around in a circle windmill yeah yeah they they they're like oh there was this uh windmill that they found in philadelphia and this sunken ship and they're like yeah this was proof <laughs> What? <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, listeners, you'll see why it's the dumbest thing by the time we get to the end of this episode. That Maybe. I mean, that's. I, I guess that explains why they picked such a ridiculous thing to make the villain's <laughs> lair, I guess. Like, yeah. did they find an elevator, too? Did they find the doctor? Did they, what did they find? That's all they talk about is that the windmill and then the sunken ship and then location off the river or whatever. Were, did they talk about if they were connected in any kind of way? Or just no? no? So it's nothing then. Alright, got it. Great job, movie. <laughs> Great job. Yeah. Uh, so again, we start in England in 1775 and uh, and it's a period piece and honestly pretty good. Like, pretty yeah. good costumes and sets and all of that stuff. The one thing that really stood out to me is that all the doors have modern hinges. And that was the only thing that I was like, "Mm, that's bugging me. I don't like that. But everything else, with the exception of like the rubber coated cables at the end, all pretty good. Yeah, it was uh, pretty okay throughout this. uh, The cinematography, the the outfits and everything were pretty darn good. Mm. There is one jacket that John Rhys-Davey Davies is wearing that just kind of looks like a felt, uh, like high school project. Oh, are you not talking but, about his Liberace, his Slitherachi white jacket that he wears near the end? <laughs> no, not that, that. that jacket is He's, awesome. <laughs> I want yeah. that jacket. Honestly, I lo- I wanted a lot of the clothing in this movie. It looked cool as hell. Like, why did we ever change our dress? Right? Why did we get rid of tri corner hats? They look cool. Bring them back. Yeah. The Tri uh, Corner hats really have a glow up in this uh, movie. Why haven't the Tri guys made Tri Corner hats? I feel like it's a real missed opportunity for synergy. I feel like it has something to do with uh, people's dicks so long that they hit the ground and they called tripods. Bruh, you gotta wa- you gotta clean up your mouth on this episode. You have been <laughs> dropping some weird words all over it, and we don't have an explicit rating anymore, so every time you say right. a weird word, I gotta go back and put a sensor over it, so mark the time, <laughs> 2305, I gotta go back and drop a sensor over the hard D word. Yeah, I should've said dink. Yeah, you should've. You should've, but you didn't, so here we are. I gotta rein it in. You're right. Exactly. Uh, John John Reese Davies wears a powdered wig for ninety five percent of the movie until he decides not to, and uh, it's pretty good. Well, once he's in America, he can let his uh, real hair fly. Exactly. Uh, so anyway, we, the, we meet the main character, William Reynolds, and he's him and his bro are sniping people on a boat, and then they slide down onto the boat and they steal some paper from like the captain's quarters but then he finds a secret drawer on the desk and steals more paper and okay great (laughs) excellent great job this this is a period piece meets national treasure meets like v for vendetta even though it takes place after v for vendetta and what else uh like Maybe Daredevil? Yeah, definitely a bit of that. Like Batman. There's definitely like a superhero vibe to this movie as it goes on. For honestly no reason. Like it just kind of all of a sudden is a superhero movie. And you're like, well, there was nothing leading up to this that would make me think this is where it's going. But okay, cool. I'll take it. 
Yeah, the second beat of this movie basically just shoehorns a superhero plot. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. I thought I'd see more apt action because of it, but I got one of the best lines that I've ever heard in my entire life. Oh. So you know what this movie you know what this movie is? This movie is like a colonial version of Zorro. That's what this is. Yeah. Not so much more Zorro than superheroes. Anyway, just yeah. Yeah. Mark of Zorro. I would uh, definitely go on that. Yeah. I definitely watched Antonio Banderas cut off Catherine Zeta Jones's dress again. Ah, uh, we should have done Zorro. Could still. We could stop this right now, watch Marco Zorro, and be like, God, Catherine Zeta Jones, you were a fox back in the day. Still, still, still are, but we know what you did to Michael Douglas's mouth, so, yeah, you know, less turned on by her. <laughs> you seem really conflicted about this. You went back and forth so quickly. I know. I like her, but also she gave him mouth cancer from, you can probably guess, and I just, you know, get the shot, lady. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Get the shot. Yeah. All right, get the shot. Get yeah, the shot. Right. All right. Yes, I super picky. Get the shot. Uh, so William does his job wonderfully. He meets up with John Reese davies who's the head of the uh, Indi- East India Company, uh, and um, which, like, weirdly enough, it's called the East India Company, but it's based out of England, and it sounds like their only role in India was massacring people. I'm not quite sure what their job is other than killing Indians. I know that it had something to do with uh, cloth. Yeah, and and, spice, uh, too, probably. Yeah, oh, oh. yeah, all that spice. Oh. Uh, maybe some slavery intertwined. <sighs> they made a lot of money at uh, India's expense. That's oh, all yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thanks to William Reynolds, the scoundrel. Yeah, the knave. Exactly. So William asks to be let out of the life. He's like, I don't want to do this anymore. I got other things I want to do. Which I thought was like, oh, he's got a family or a woman that he loves or something like that. And no, nah, it's just he just doesn't want to do it anymore. He doesn't want to kill people anymore, the coward. And so... Yeah, some gladiator situation. Because he was promised, like, money, land, mm-hmm. a new title, a right. new name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that he's like, yeah, well, let me out of... I don't want to do this anymore. And John Reese davies is like, oh, but we could give you more money. And he's like, yeah, well, you already owe me $10,000. So maybe pay yeah. me that and then let me get out of here. And he goes, okay, you you got it. And then immediately plants a bomb in his carriage and is like, we're going to blow this mother fricker up, actually. So, <laughs> Yeah, it seemed like that bomb was in place before this even uh, happened. So he was going to kill him either way. Whether yeah. Whether he went and decided to go to America or not. Because, yeah, he, Very weird. he leaves, gets right in the carriage, and then everything happens. And it's like, well, how did that bomb get in there? How did any... Whatever. Whatever. Fine. Movie. Fine. Uh, I do like that... William's partner before he leaves is like, good luck, Will. Safe travels. And you're like, oh, that's <laughs> not ominous at all. Thank you. <laughs> Very ominous. Mm-hmm. Very ominous. And uh, so they're on their way, and uh, then all of a sudden this guy on this yeah. flipping horse yeah. Some trying to wave bad. him down. Some dingbat who's like, sir, your carriage is on fire. Sir, your carriage is on fire. Which, like, how did that happen? How does his carriage... Hey, mind your business. Right? Just let it burn, brother. It's fine. <laughs> but Super nice guy. Yeah, totally gets shot for his efforts, gets totally murked. Uh, they, everyone tries to kill William. He, like, fights his way out, and then the carriage explodes, and William, like, tumbles down a hill, and he finds the dead man, who turn, it turns out is a vicar, and is, like, headed to an estate to be that estate's vicar. And so... Yeah. Uh, he's the vicar, baby. He's the yeah. vicar, yeah. I'm in love with the vicar. I, I have that <laughs> later in my notes, but I wanted to sing it now. <laughs> uh, it's too hard to hold back. That was worth it. Thanks, man. Loved yeah. It. I was As soon as she said, well, she didn't say I'm in love with the vicar, but I was like, well, once I thought of it, I had to listen to T-Pain. So, um, <laughs> so he get he jumps. He st- so he's like, I'm going to become the vicar. My w- William Reynolds, they think he's dead. He blew up in the carriage. Everyone who was involved is dead. So they're not going to ask any questions. And I'm going to become this vicar and take on this life. And honestly, the opening of this movie, not bad. Like, pretty decent. Pretty good. They're in uh, Allsbury on the coast of some lake. Yes. In, uh middle london so he takes the priest cross and he takes his papers and he's like don't worry dead priest i'll avenge us both but then in the very next scene oh also william gets shot in the shoulder he's shot in the shoulder and in the very next scene he's uh 
In the very next scene, he's like right. He's there's people at the estate, and this horse comes trotting into the state into the estate, and William's like passed out on the horse, and then he falls face first into the lake, and is just like going to drown in the lake. So his his declaration of all avenge us both almost doesn't happen because if nobody was there to rescue him, he would have just drowned and died, and that would have been the end of it. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, good on that horse for finding some people for him to dump in a lake near. The one for taking him to exactly where he needed to go somehow. <laughs> like the, Horses the, knew where they needed to go back then. Yeah. You didn't even, they were like automatic cars. Well, yeah, ex exactly. They would crash into trees and burst into super hot flames that you can't put out. And then that would be the end of it. Yeah, you'd whisper in their ears like, I'm going to Nelsbury. <laughs> and then they would just go right. until you'd, they were there. You'd whisper in their ear, you'd pull them close, and you'd go, wait till you see my dick. And they'd be like, oh, <laughs> Yang Yang Twins, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Yang Yang Twins, only oh, for that song. Though. Me too, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, bitch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to censor that out, but I just wanted to say it because I, I thought it would be it's funny. Bick. It's not. Did we, uh, did we settle on Bick? We did, we did. I am going to censor that out because I think it's funny, but... <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and whispering and the whole lot. No, I'll leave all that in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you stupid horse, take me to Ellsbury. <laughs> Get me there. Come on. Don't drop me in the lake, you dumb horse. But it does. So he's rescued by Charlotte, this uh, the blonde lady who lives at the estate. And uh, immediately. The Holloways. The Holloways, that's correct. And immediately they're like, oh, these two are going to fall in love for sure. Sha oh, yeah. Shaolin is there. She's definitely going to be his savior and whatever. Basically, like, 60% of these early scenes are just Charlotte and uh, William eye-flipping each oh, other. Oh, yeah. Like, just grabbing their groins. Like, they're just... <laughs> Like every every single scene they have together, it, Shaolin can barely contain herself, and it's like this dude is a priest. Well, no, he's a vicar, so he can get married technically. But like, wow, she is revved up, all fired up, and no place to go. You know? Yeah. And then when they go for a long walk, and they happen upon the lake, <laughs> and William tries to kiss her, and she falls into the lake. <laughs> what an idiot! I'll be right back. I just got to open this door a little bit. Keep going. Keep going. You're doing great. Can you believe this lake? This lake that we all love and cherish. Water. Salt. Yes, I super picky. Salt. What did you say? Uh, I vamped about uh, water and nice. lakes. Did you vamp about how the butler at this estate is a former slave trader who worked for yeah. the East India Company and he has like a sweet tattoo on his arm of the East India Company and also like a bomber jacket that has it like stitched on there? Yeah, with big EIC energy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I, I really love that he's like hiding his tattoo and be like, oh, I, yeah, I used to work for the East India Company and like, you know, we the, the the owner, like Shaolin knows, but, you know, I try not to tell anybody else. And then he just has a jacket that says East India Company in big writing on the breast of it. And he just wears it around. You're like, subtle, man. You're hiding it well. <laughs> it, it beguiles the mind. Yeah. Did you love the scene where William, as the vicar, is now forced to do mass and he's like, whoa. <laughs> Stand up and uh, sit down and uh, I can't read my own writing. I don't know. But, like, why did they have to sit back down? Couldn't he just, like, make them sing something while they're standing up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, no, you have to have them sit. Like, no, you don't. Yeah, uh, that's all I did at church was stand up and sit down. Yeah, fight, 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 of course. It was all just, like, it, eh, whatever. Church, church was boring. But it would have been more fun if the vicar was a scoundrel and he had m murdered people in India. That would have been a way more interesting church. Yeah, he's a man for hire. Yeah, he that's will true. do whatever you need doing as long as it hurts somebody or it whips somebody. Mm hmm. God, uh, did you did you think William was a good actor in this? Uh, it's hard to say. It's borderline offensive, but pretty good as well. He's he has he has a pretty terrible British accent. I'll give him that. Yeah. Do you I, think he's from Britain? No, I think he's probably from like Nebraska. If I had to guess. Yeah, I'd have to guess that too. I'd have to guess that. Would you guess that him and Shaolin are married in real life? Charlotte. Yeah. 
I uh, no. Well, they are. They got married in 2016 after this movie came out. So they've been really? married ever since. They fell in love. They fell in love. I googled John Avery or whatever his name is, and the like. The second picture is him and her with her holding up her like wedding ring, and I go, "Oh, they must have gotten married." Well, at first I was like, "Is that a scene from the movie I haven't seen yet?" And then I went, "They're wearing hoodies, so probably not." But <laughs> it's. Turns out it wasn't. No Zion wonder Rowe. they used so many scenes of them like I frickin' because like that was probably real energy. Yeah, of course it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't think that they were having extramarital like SEX on the set of this movie, then brother, you've never made a movie before. <laughs> like between takes and everything, like in oh, front yeah. of everybody. They would just like take, you know, William's wearing like, he's wearing a shirt and a scarf and a vest and a coat and an overcoat. And he's like, help me get all of this off because I need to get my <laughs> rocks off too. Yeah, they had like a hundred stagehands come in and like take off his clothing for him. Ooh, that sounds hot. Yeah, I wish I wish I could have a hundred <laughs> people undress me. That sounds fun. Well, yeah, and then she puts out the tip jar, and you know, <laughs> you got to make your money that, between takes. Babe. I don't like that. I don't. I that's a euphemism, don't and like? I don't appreciate that you called her a tip jar. I don't. I don't like what that implies about somebody. No, she pulls out a tip jar. Yeah, I know. You don't have to keep calling it that. I get it. I get it. I just really want them to make a little money off of this. Is that what you say to your wife? You say, hey, pull out your tip jar. Daddy's <laughs> daddy's going to take off 100 layers of clothing. I meant a legitimate tip jar. I know what you meant. I know what you meant. No, I don't think you do. Uh, well, moving on then. Uh, <laughs> Shaolin's going to America with her uncle, and the vicar's like, gosh darn it are you kidding me i was trying to get it in and she's like yeah. no sorry you i and oh so he like shoots a shot and is like will you marry me <laughs> she's like i don't <laughs> i don't know <laughs> it's been weeks and she's a very sheltered person obviously for sure i mean she fell off the freaking dock just because he tried to kiss her right who made that dock it crumpled like as soon as she leaned <laughs> she on really it did. the railing just fell apart like awful Do you do you think the uh, constructor of that dock was Jesus and he knew that one day that would happen, so he loosened the nuts? I mean, I think it was God's will that that happened, certainly. Wow. It was ju it's truly God's will. God, even though he's God like a vicar and everything, yeah. God really doesn't come into play until like the end of this movie. Yeah, that's a good point. And I hate how they shoot. Like, listeners, I'm in good spirits now, but I'm going to get mad by the end of this movie. I just want you to know, <laughs> I'm going to be furious once we reach a certain point in this movie. I'm going to be lit up like the 4th of July. I'm just, I'm going to pop off. I'm going to be furious. So just hang in for here for that, because I'm going to yeah. get mad as we go. This uh, movie has a lot of third act problems. Oh my gosh, does it ever. So... <laughs> So Will uh, comes back, and then uh, he comes back to his little house. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, he comes back to his little house, and there's uh, a guy there. And there, yeah. it's, it's not his friend, and it's not, like, it's not his former partner, and it's not the former slave owner. It's just another guy. And we're, like, we're supposed to know who this guy is because William's like, oh, you've been sent by the East India Company. And, well, how about I tr trade you the papers about whatever his name is John Reese Davies and you can get him in trouble and then you spare my life and the guy goes nah I'm gonna kill you and then take the papers yeah and so I'm gonna have my papers and eat it too exactly and what he does eat is a brick fireplace to the back of the head is what he eats because he slips on a candlestick and bonks his nog and <laughs> dies like an idiot how crazy is it that like they have this sword fight and this really uh epic battle well not really it's not even a sword they fight. have it's this a tussle fist yeah yeah fist the cuffs mm -hmm. they fist they fist cuffs yeah and then his whole life he's probably been a scoundrel gone into yeah. amazing amount of uh gun and fist fights and sword fights uh, and then he slips on a candle and dies. <laughs> yeah, they really go out of their way to make William not murder people directly. He murders a lot of people, but not by his own hands. Like, it's just more just like, oh, I, 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 I pushed this guy and he slipped on a candlestick and bonked his head. Or I people were shooting at me and I did like a barrel roll and threw a guy in the air and he gets shot in the head by a musket. But I didn't kill him. Like, that's just... God's will right there. You know, God guided the musket bullet into his brain that I threw at him. So they, yeah, they, they do a lot of legwork to make him not a murderer, even though he's a total murderer. 
<laughs> and a whipper. And a real whipper snapper. And a heck of a grave digger, because he buries that man on the property toot sweet, <laughs> just dumps him in the ground and <laughs> moves on with his life. Well, he very smartly used a pickaxe to like break around uh, <laughs> part the ground, yeah. and then he shovels the rest of the dirt. He doesn't just use a shovel. He knows how to dig a grave. You know how many Indians he buried in India? So many. <laughs> Alive? Yeah, of course. They hated them. They, you kidding me? They were trying to steal silk and spice. They were burying whole villages alive if they could help it. Do you know how hard the ground is in India? I mean, who? No. You don't have time to kill them and bury them. No, that's why you get. That's why he uses a pickaxe. He's got to break up that hard ground. Is he's just back yeah. to his Indian training? Uh, your spit will only do so much in Indian <laughs> ground. <laughs> So after he buries a man who he tried who killed who he killed, he yeah. then goes and proposes to Shaolin and is like, "I'm not a good man. I'm not worthy of your love. I'm a real piece of dog dirt. But uh, will you marry me?" <laughs> and she's yeah. like, "I'm a vicar. Will you marry me?" Yeah, <laughs> I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. And she's like, <laughs> "She's like, uh, well, I I can't, uh, I can't really say." I wish I could say yes, but I don't fully trust myself to make a decision of this importance alone. You go, well, that's a weird cop out. Okay. Yeah, I can't. I can't send yes now, but will you wait until my uncle comes at Christmas? Yeah, my uncle, who is taking me to America, who is the most important person in my life. Listeners, who do you think he is? If you had <laughs> one guess, who do you think this guy is? It's John well, Reese Davies. Yes. Yeah, Charles. As Char he's called in the flick. Right. But, but it, Jonathan O'Hurley. Ex exactly, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So then at Christmas time, John Reese davies shows up. William and him, like, he's like, ah, oh, she's like, please meet my uncle. And then in walks John Reese davies And William's like, oh, hey, man. And John Reese davies <laughs> is immediately like, Shaolin, please leave. We we have some dis men talk to do. And she's like, oh, yes, I'm just a dumb woman in 81775. You're, please, sir. So she leaves. And he's immediately yeah. like, I'm going to freaking kill you, bud. Like, yeah. you th you think you got away with this? I'm going to blow up your spot the first chance I get. And William's like, oh, please don't. Oh, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, William immediately goes to like, no, I'm happy. <laughs> just don't, okay? <laughs> I love the rhyme that John Reese davies hits him with where he's like, you're not a man of peace. Not my niece. So thought that was a nice little line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it really clues in to the end, uh, um, but he kind of, his lines are like bad video game lines. <laughs> yeah, he is a mustache twirling villain throughout most of this movie. But he, yeah. honestly, out of the whole cast, he seems to be having the most fun out of anyone. So I got to give him props yeah. for that. She is not your sort. <laughs> One of his lines. And, and he he's really right. brings that around too. But he's right though, because William is a murderer. Like he murders so many people in his life, and then it's just like, whatever. Don't even don't even worry about it, bro. It's fine. It so, was a different time, but he does like to murder a lot. Yeah. But I mean, uh, Johnny likes to set the wheels in motion so as many people get killed as possible. That's also true. Yeah. So as soon as Charlotte comes back, he's like, "Hey, by the way, this is that infamous murderer, William Reynolds." <laughs> And William's like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> and so he jumps out a window, and there's th I did like this scene where he jumps out of the window and then beats the ever-loving heck out of a bunch of dudes and then turns around, and just Charlotte's whole family is there. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, hey, man, <laughs> what's up with this? And he's like, I got to go, <laughs> and runs off. Yeah. The flipping towns there, and they're just like, "What is happening?" <laughs> the vicar and jumped out the window and beat three men to death with a sledgehammer. I can't believe it. I I honestly really like the action sequences for the first bit of this movie. Yeah. There's some pretty fun. good stuff. Yeah, there's a, they lean pretty heavily on the trope of jumping through a window, but it's still pretty there, good. There's like four windows that are <laughs> jump through in Something this movie. Like that, yeah. I think it's actually only three, but still, it's... But, like, not ground-level windows. Like, second floor, third floor windows. Just head first, dive right through them, whatever. Don't even worry about it. 
I think it goes through every floor you could imagine. One, two, and three. Wow, well, that's as high as they could build it at the time, yeah. Yeah. So William's trying to escape, and it's like, dude, it's not looking good. But then the former slaver rides up on a horse and is like, come with me. And so he gets on the horse, and they ride out together. Uh, they get away. The former slaver dude has been shot. He's like, uh, he says some junk about like, uh, redemption, not revenge. There is only one name with the power to make you new. And then, like, obviously it's God. Duh. And so uh, he yeah. dies, and William's like, I guess I'm off to America. Bye-bye. Spring 1776, America, Philadelphia. Yeah, Philly. Oh, first William William asks God to help him redeem his name, and if he does, he'll lay aside his revenge. That's very important because he's trying to redeem his name that's his whole mission is to redeem his name so he can get in charlotte's pants that's the whole point of everything he's doing listeners make yeah. note of that he admits it throughout too mm -hmm. he, he doesn't have any other uh notions other than he really is promoting liberty i guess yeah <laughs> <laughs> So he ends up, it's spring, like you said, spring 1776, and he's in Philly looking for one Benj Frankeman himself, the inventor of keys tied to strings tied to kites. He really becomes a cuck of Benji Franklin right away. I don't like Benj Frankeman in this movie at all. <laughs> I think he's a, I don't like that he's just like, are he's like, are you Benj Frankman? He goes, well, that depends. Do I owe you money? And I'm like, I don't like this this characterization of him. I don't think he was like swarthy and like a a goofy like jokester. I, yeah, maybe he was. Maybe he was just an everyman who was super smart and chill. <laughs> maybe. You know what I really liked about Philadelphia when they get there? There's tons of horse crap all over the ground. The ground is <laughs> covered in horse crap. As yeah. far as the eye can see. And I went, that's probably, that's that's the single best bit of world building I've seen in this movie yet. It's good cinematography. Yeah, absolutely it is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you favor the king or alternatives yet to be explored? Shut up, Benj Frankman. <laughs> Take him in or don't, man. Like, enough of the games. to be explored? What kind of line is that? Right? <laughs> Like, are you hitting on me, Benj? I mean, <laughs> later on, I go, he is hitting on him, I'm pretty sure, so... Was that the uh, big reveal of this movie? Is that uh, Benjamin Franklin liked it both ways? Well, we don't even know if he liked it one way. He might have liked it the other way, for sure. There's nothing to indicate he liked it the first way. <laughs> there is no true, definable facts that Benjamin Franklin liked it either way. Exactly, yeah. Benj Franklin, as far as we know, just he li he liked it however he could get it, as far as we understand. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a shame? Isn't that the same for all of us, though? Get it any way you yeah. can. Am I right, listeners? Yeah, exactly. Pay your bills. Exactly. Tweet yes or no at Pure Boys Pod on Twitter, <laughs> and we'll know what you mean. <laughs> I just want one Twitter, one email, please, <laughs> please. Please, just send us a yes or a no so we know if, if you like it any way you can get it. Please. <laughs> Hashtag get it in if you can. That's right. Hashtag me too. Uh, so me too? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh... <laughs> yes, me too. Yes, me too. Yes, oh, me too. That's very good. Yes, I super picky. Um, so Ben Franklin sends him to a pub and is like, oh, why don't you go to this pub and try the lamb? It's delicious. And so he goes in, and it's like, I don't understand what happens in this pub because a guy approaches him and is like, oh, do you support the king? And he's like, that stinking devil-worshipping pig man? And everyone's like, how dare you? We love the king in this pub. And he's like, yeah. okay. Okay, I don't really... I'm not committed to any of these beliefs. I don't know why I'm saying that I hate the king for some reason, but here we are. Well, he's a Benji Franklin cuck. He uh, yeah. he immediately is a anti-loyalist, anti-king person for no reason at all. Yeah. He's 100% into liberty. And this is why Benji Franklin tells him to go to this pub, because he knows it's a loyalist pub. But, like, I guess it's just, like... Is he because Benj's whole thing is like, I need to test your loyalty. I need to make yeah. sure that you're an honest man. But as far as I can tell, 
William doesn't care anyway, so he's just like lying about being a, a an independence guy. <laughs> like he's just like he's just playing the field. He doesn't care about any of this stuff. So, so he tricks Ben Frankman apparently. Well, it seems like he's anti uh, King because he he makes fun of the pub. He says loyal pub for loyal pups. Oh, that's good. He says <laughs> royal pubes. Am I right, guys? <laughs> Man, royal pubes, what is that like? I don't know, ask the queen. Extra soap. Oh, definitely. Special shampoos for sure. Not not royal. head hair shampoo, different shampoo. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Patchouli, uh, all kinds of <laughs> potpourris. Back when patchouli was cool. Yeah, back when they murdered a ton of Indians to get it, and it was like... Yeah. That's it was worth it then. You're like the blood of a million Indians is soaked into this patchouli. This is great. Listeners, please don't cut out me saying the blood of a million Indians. Don't don't cut that out and ruin my life with it, please. 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 <laughs> um John Reese Davies is in America with Shaolin and he's like Getting, he's like encourages a group of rebel rousers to create havoc in order to disrupt America and to stop the colony from becoming united. That's it. And then the uh, highwayman is born. Yeah. To then thwart these loyalist scoundrels for no reason. William's like, you know what? I'm going to become a masked vigilante. <laughs> <laughs> just like and Benji Franklin's like, yeah, I'm gonna be your uh, Alfred, whatever. Kind, but not really. He's just like, I'm gonna print newspaper stories about you, <laughs> and I don't even, but, I don't even know you're the guy. <laughs> like nobody knows he's the guy. He's just the guy all of a sudden. They do the classic thing where they show a bunch of news articles, but none of them call him the highwayman. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They just say like, masked vigilante does this, yeah. or guy stops this, or yeah. 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 And they're in charge of the news. They they make a paper. <laughs> yeah. And they're the ones who named him Highwayman, yeah. and they don't use it. Nah. It doesn't make any sense. It's just an in joke for them. It's like it's like yeah. it's like if two guys had a podcast, and behind the audience's back, they called it Yes I Super Picky, <laughs> but on the show they called it Pure Boys. It's like that kind of thing. Oh man, this is Yes I Super Picky till I die. Oh bomb plot foiled at Brandenburg, and I was like the Gatlinburg brothers. Is that what we're talking about here? <laughs> Episode one, check it out. Facing the Giants, you best bet. joke ever. John Reese Davies is like, how is he? Sp how is he foiling our every move? How does he know what we're going to do? And I went, that's a good question that is never explained in this nope. movie. He just knows where they're doing stuff and blows up their things and kills a bunch of people. But it's fine because they're anti-loyalists or something. I don't know. Well, he's like that. He must have somebody in our uh, ranks. Yeah. And then it's he, not addressed at all. Yeah, and he doesn't. He doesn't have any inside information. He just is lucky, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> he just happened to be... To be fair, from the looks of it, Philadelphia is about two streets big. So yeah. any you stand on any rooftop, you're going to see what's going on in the whole town. And they probably had like a loyalist section of town and then a patriots section of town. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, you just go by the docks. Yeah, exactly. Tom Brady docks. This movie did have some barbed wire vibes to it, certainly, near the end. I'll give it that. Um, yeah, I thought Charlotte was barbed wire. Oh, I wish. Are you kidding me? Take it all, all off. It. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to say your favorite line in the movie? Because I think we've come to it. Yeah, I think we have. I was going to ask you if you were going to ask me to ask you. <laughs> um, okay, here's the line. Daniel Johnson is a treasonous rabble rouser. Woo! Really good. That was really good. I liked it. Yeah, I love that line. That is... I, I wish we could say such things in public nowadays. You can. You can scream it at people from your car. You know well, they're... from our car. Yeah, that yeah. That comes up a lot in our podcast. Well, yeah, because it's the funniest <laughs> way to scream things at people. I used to play this game where I'd drive around in my car, and I'd... Well, not like it. Not this wasn't the point. It was just if I was happened to be driving around, if I saw someone walking down the street, I'd wave at them, and then as soon as they'd wave back, I'd flip them off, and it was I, very funny. I went around with you and played that game with you. It's a, a fun game. It's a fun game. <laughs> I felt guilty a couple of times, but that was the fun of it a little. Yeah, you get a little tinge of guilt, a little a big laugh. You listen to Young Americans by David Bowie. You have a good time. It's a fun afternoon. 
the old ladies gave the best responses. Oh, yeah, for sure. They would give us, like, <laughs> DX suckets when we'd do that. <laughs> crotch chops. <laughs> and what a crotch job. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so the bad guys break into this house of this guy, Daniel Johnson, and Charlotte or Shaolin happens to be there for dinner, and yeah. so is a baby, I guess. And they de- they drag <laughs> Daniel so Johnson, <laughs> they drag him out in the street, and they're gonna tar and feather him. Which I never realized before how horrific that would be. Like the tar is boiling. I didn't that didn't occur to me. I thought it was like, yeah, they just dump tar on you. But it's like, no, no, no. Your skin would melt off your skull. You would be. Yeah. You would die from that. You would die from... I thought it was something you just, like, oh, it's inconvenient. No, it would kill you for sure if you got tarred and feathered. Yeah, it, it's super sticky. <laughs> yeah, yes, I super sticky. It would boil you alive, probably. Yeah, it's horrifying. Like, getting tarred and feathered is a horrendous thing. Yeah. Horrendous? Yeah, but luckily we don't ever see how bad it gets because the highwayman shows up and he beats up, beats a couple of guys to death, and then he runs up to Charlotte and goes, your uncle is behind all this. Also, I'm <laughs> William. Just kidding. I don't tell you that. And then other people show up, and then the one of the bad guys steals a baby and runs away. And you go, well, I guess that's what happened. And so William chases him. And jumps through another window. Yeah, jumps through two windows. I'm pretty sure he jumps yeah, into he right. jumps through a window into a building and then out a window in out of the building again. <laughs> People are like, please don't break our windows. Yeah, they're gonna have to pay. Insurance didn't exist back then. Not good insurance. No, God no. I did. I really did like the shot of him jumping over the rooftop in slow motion, where they show all of Philadelphia and he like and it goes like bro and he like jumps up into the air. I was like, that's cool. That's a good shot. There's some good stuff is, in this movie. Yeah, this is kind of still earlier on, first third of the movie, where you're like, okay, they're ramping up. I like how every action scene is getting a little bit more intense, and there's a little bit more art to it. Yeah. Like the slowing down in the picturesque view. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, this is going to continue to grow and grow. This is a great movie. Mm-hmm. But- so while he's doing all of that his former partner somehow found out where he lived found out it was him found out where he lived found where the papers are being held that remember the papers that he found that that implicate john reese davies in all the atrocities in india but they got swapped for papers that indicated in indicted william for all the so it william isn't actually guilty of all these crimes that he's hated for john reese davies is and he has the actual papers to prove that so his former partner breaks into his house and swaps those papers out with, like, as we find out, blank papers and just steals mm-hmm. all of his evidence away <laughs> and just is like, well, there goes all of your, there goes your card. Like, you don't get, you get nothing now. So they, so they had to a masquerade when ball. You, yeah. When you're playing games with themes, you got to expect your papers to get swapped. Yeah. You got to hide them better than in your jacket. Like, like you, a like a loose panel on your desk or something. Exactly, or a rickety floorboard, or like, or just not in your home. Put them in the hollow of a tree or something. Like, don't put them in your friggin' jacket next to your wall of stuff that is all about William Reynolds. <laughs> like, it's the heatest or thing. Give them to Benjamin Franklin immediately, and then uh, this whole thing is Man, done. I'm starting to get heated because we're getting to the stuff that makes me so yeah. mad in this movie. So. They go to this masquerade ball in New York City on July 3rd, 1776. That's right, the day before independence. Boop. So they go there. Everyone's there. John Reese davies Shaolin, William is there in his, in his, like, superhero costume. It's like, what are you doing here? Why are you doing this? And George Washington is there. Pretty exciting stuff. The guy doesn't Colonel really look George like George Washington. Uh, General George Washington. General? Yep. They call him General Washington, so it's not just like, he's generally a Washington. I think his rank in the military <laughs> was general. Yeah, like he didn't have a general store, and they called him General Washington. <laughs> yeah, come to General Washington's. We have hair pomade. Um, I even have it right in my notes, right in front of me, General Washington. <laughs> William is a dumb idiot in this scene, because he... <laughs> immediately like he they know who he is they know Mm -hmm. that the masked vigilante is william he rolls up to the masquerade ball dressed in his vigilante outfit goes straight to shaolin is like do you want to dance 
the yeah. niece of the villain. He's like, you want to dance with me? And then while they're dancing, he's like, all right, uh, so your uncle is going to blow up. He's going to try to kill George Washington, and there's a bunch of bombs, <laughs> and they're just dancing in a crowd of people, this dance where you swap partners and move around, and he's just just talking all of this nonsense to her and she's like okay okay and he goes when the time comes will you stand by me when i confront your uncle and she's like i mean i guess so i guess and he goes i have papers that prove everything i'm saying will you stand by me and she goes sure fine and uh <laughs> get out of here right it's like you're totally blowing up your spot bro but then he sees someone with a knife going to kill george washington and does this is where I was like, oh, is this barbed wire? Like his plan is garbage from the looks of it because he <laughs> he stops the guy from killing George Washington, but in the process ends up with the knife. The guy who was trying to kill George Washington goes, that guy's trying to kill George Washington, and he yeah, goes, look, what? He's he's done this before. He's almost assassinated tons of people. Yeah, and he gets dummied instantly. Like he's just like. I don't what are you talking and they they so people grab William they pull his mask off it's him and yeah. everyone's there John Reese Davies is just like hey there's William Reynolds that murderous guy who everybody hates and we're all after weird that he was trying everybody to everybody knows about him yeah and everyone goes yeah we paper. we know about him yeah he's a murderer <laughs> and he's trying to kill George Washington and he like he immediately is like, I wasn't trying to kill George Washington. But then seven people that worked for John Reese Davies were like, yeah, you were. We saw you. <laughs> you were trying to kill him. And George Washington tries to hear him out. He gives him way more breath than he should. Yeah. But he's like, okay, you have papers? Let, let's see him. Let's go, buddy. Yeah, show me the papers. And so he's like, okay, fine. Here's my papers. And he takes out the envelope with the papers. And they're blank because they got swapped out by the other guy. And... John Reese davies rightly goes, oh, uh, first of all, he's like, I, I got these papers nine months ago, and now I'm going to use them to take you down. And John Reese davies go, goes, if you had these papers nine months ago, why didn't you use them then? Why did you let the rabble-rousers kill a ton of people in the meantime if you think that your papers could have stopped that? You could have stopped this at any time. Instead, you let people die so that you yeah. didn't so that you could blow it in the end you idiot <laughs> take him away to be hanged he decided to become a masked vigilante and just spend a bunch of time thwarting these petty crimes yeah he could have stopped this day 1 he didn't even have to go to america he had the papers that exonerated himself he could have gone straight to the press and gone here's the papers that implicate john reese davies and shut down the east india company and then nobody would have had to die but instead as he explains to shaolin later well i wanted to become a man that you would respect so i went to america and dressed up like a stupid idiot and then killed a bunch of people and allowed other people to be killed and she rightly goes yeah, but you could have stopped this nine months ago. And he's like, yeah, but, yeah. like, I wanted to become a good man first. <laughs> She's like, well, that's not how you do it, dude. You just... Yeah, she rightly gets on his case. Like, neither yeah. redemption or love can ever be earned. That's right. You have but to ask. So, like, why would she be in love with him at that point? She's, like, clearly kind of flirting with him, too, and it's like... This guy has so much blood on his hands. And because he's the first man who isn't related to you that showed you interest, you're like, look, maybe I'll help you escape from jail. And then, you know, you can we can smash, I guess. But, like, why? Like, you want to give it up to the movie because they rightly, like, Charlotte rightly craps on this guy yeah. for not ending this a lot sooner. But it kind of unfolds this whole plot of this entire movie. Yeah, and also it's like swept under the rug immediately. He could have, he, this movie didn't have to happen, but instead he wanted to like look good so he could bang Charlotte. And then, so to do that, he just let a bunch of people get killed, even though he could have stopped it nine months ago. He's a villain. He's a villain in this movie. Dang it. <laughs> I'm furious. I'm kind of hamming it up. I'm not that mad. Villain? But <laughs> the hero is a villain. That's right. Oh, also, when he's like, when everyone, when everyone's dogging on him, when he tries to kill George Washington, he's looking at Charlotte like, hey, this is where you're supposed to stand up with me. And she's like, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm not, you, you're done. I'm not throwing my hat in the ring with you, bro. You're done. Get out yeah. of here. And 
just again, like rightly so. Yeah. Nothing. We're, uh, and she says to him, were you letting people die to earn redemption? To earn yeah. my love? <laughs> he goes, Is that yeah. It? And then he's like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. He, he doesn't. He doesn't try to like make up some other story no. or there was a reason why he was holding on to the papers for somebody's <laughs> life or Benji Franklin or something. I let just people, like, yeah. I let people die for you, Shaolin, for you. Like it's, you're an it's idiot, a, William. An idiot. And so is she, I guess, because she falls in love with him. So I guess they're perfect for each other. Well, it seems like she should be totally done with this guy, but they then they take him off in the carriage, and mm -hmm. she's still kind of, like, swooning for him a little bit. Yeah, and she overhears John Reese davies say, William was in business for himself all along. And you go, yeah, yeah, he totally was. He couldn't care less about the colonies or about saving people's lives. He was just trying to get in them drawers, and <laughs> I, he failed. He totally blew he it. He admits it. Yep. Yeah. Idiot. Uh. So then Charlotte prays and is like, and this is I. This is where I got mad because she prays and she goes, "Lord, despite the crimes of this man, redeem his life." Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> There's so yeah. many people that aren't lunatics like William. I pray you redeem his life, redeem him. Like he's he has just as much blood on his hands as your uncle does. And you're like, yeah. yeah, but like frick, I can't frick my uncle, but I can frick this guy who's who's done nothing but lie to me and let people die in service of trying to get in my pants and lie to me and kill people. It's kind of flattering in a way. He did all this for yeah. me. It is very flattering. Ugh. And I would run away to the ends of the earth with him. And in jail, William goes, I get what I, I'm getting what I deserve tomorrow. And I went, yep. If this movie ends with you hanging from the gallows, I'll feel good about it, but I know it won't, so... Like, this uh, this script is being very real with itself, and, like, <laughs> William is being kind of honest about how dumb he is, mm -hmm. but then they just sweep it under the rug uh, throughout this movie. Like, yep. it never comes back to bite him in the butt like it should. What'd you think of this garbage exchange when he's, he's being held in the hold of a ship, and in voiceover we hear someone go... Visitor for the prisoner. And another person go, he's in the hold. And the first guy goes, it's a lady and she wishes to see him on the main deck. And the and the other guy, instead of going, no, goes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like midnight. I don't want to have to deal with some stupid visitor. Also, no, we're not just going to let prisoners go on the main deck to meet somebody. Like, if she wants to talk to him, go to the hold where he's chained up. We're not going to unchain yeah. him and take him up into the open. Certainly seems like a way... fresh air. Yeah, and it certainly seems like a perfect chance to escape. Like, yeah. no. But instead he goes, okay, that seems fine. And then guess what happens? Yeah. He escapes! <laughs> the end the, it just happens i guess me putting up my hands didn't really relate in audio medium that's okay but it's just dumbfounded well because he he goes out they go up on the deck and he's like god gave me his acceptance and redemption god cleared my name he was trying in vain to get my name cleared and it didn't work until god helped me and all i had to do was turn over these papers <laughs> <laughs> he's trying so hard to redeem his name but he had the method of doing it in his possession for nine months and he didn't do anything with it and then somehow god just goes yep i get your name's cleared now bud congratulations yeah you got it i mean i think between this uh charlotte overhears uh john race davies say that he killed her father. He didn't he kill, her father. kill her father. He didn't. He didn't say. You know. He 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 complained about her father, but he never said that he killed him. But he did say he would kill her if she got in the way. I think it's implied that he killed her father too. Mm, well, you're making some leaps, but okay, I'll give it to you. That's fine. <laughs> he <laughs> did say. Thanks for begrudgingly giving that to me. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. He did say that he was gonna guy fox the frick out of uh, of Philadelphia or, or New York or whatever. Yeah, he's going to burn it to ashes mm -hmm. or make it ashes or something. Mm -hmm. And he says Guy Fox, he just for no reason, just goes, ah, Guy Fox. And then you go, okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he just really wants to shoehorn uh, Guy Fox into this. Mm -hmm. Remember, remember, the 8th of November. Exactly. I know. 
I don't know when it is. When they're on the boat. Twitters. (laughs) Yeah, save your tweets on that one. We don't need them. (laughs) No. When they're on the boat, Charlotte's like, you have to save me, Will. And she jumps off the boat. So he goes, the lady fell overboard. And then two men come over and Will beats them to death and then grabs the keys off of them, jumps in the water, saves her. A boat comes over with other men in it. He gets out of the water into the boat, beats those men to death, and then frees himself, and then they escape. So (laughs) in saving his life, he takes four more. Again, just notches on the belt. Murder. That's what he's good at. Oh, he's great at it. Yeah. She She commissioned a carriage to help them escape, but then he just kicks the floor out of it and is like, didn't you know this was a smuggler's carriage? And there's just a gun and a knife hidden in a secret compartment, but it's not his carriage. And how did he know it was a smuggler's carriage? And also he's <laughs> damn lucky that there was a gun and a knife in there. <laughs> like, I I think that might be some loose writing on uh, no. the scripts part. You think there's yeah, loose writing that- in this movie? That really scratched my brain for a bit. Didn't you know it was a smuggler's carriage? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. So they get to Washington or wherever. Yeah, I think it's Washington where they're going to. And they like, no, Philly. it's Philadelphia. It's Philly, yeah. And so they get to Philly, and he's like, okay, you need to go to the house of Benj Frankman, and I'm going to go uh, I kill your uncle or whatever I'm going to go do. And she goes, okay, that sounds good. So he leaves in the carriage, and then another carriage comes up and immediately kidnaps her. Like, she's not even out for, like, a minute. Like, he's not even out of eyesight yet, and she's kidnapped. (laughs) I had to rewind, because I think I looked down at my, like, computer to make a note, and then she was freaking gone already. Like, it, it's crazy. It's like, so funny. Like, at least funny. have to walk, like, a half a block or something. Right. Or even cut nope. to, like, a little bit later and she's, like, in a different neighborhood or something. She picks up her jacket to leave and then is kidnapped. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's her. Whoops. Like, they have a voiceover of the guy in the carriage going, that's, it's crazy. I, I do love that the carriage pulls up and then in voiceover we hear, 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 uh, we hear her get kidnapped when he's like, you're coming with us. No, I'm not coming with you. Come on, my lady. Come on, get in the carriage. And then the carriage leaves. And you go, couldn't film her getting kidnapped, huh? Okay, well, fair enough. They didn't want to go from one set location to another. They just had to get it done there. Well, I think... That's that, cutting costs. I think that they filmed this whole movie and then in the edit went, oh, crap, we didn't put in a scene where she gets kidnapped because it's her, like, holding a jacket. She picks up her jacket and then, like... What could have been a CGI cart just rolls in and covers the whole frame. Then there's voiceover, and then it leaves, and then there's just a jacket on the ground, which also could have been CGI. So I have a feeling they they doctored that scene together yeah. with movie. Somehow magic. they butchered the kidnap scene, or they forgot about it entirely. Yeah, <laughs> and they had to do it later because she was in like a like an '80s business suit and like a <laughs> nice sharp jacket. I like, like that green she's wearing. It's a nice outfit. It's a beautiful outfit. Did you see? I think the- William's outfit for the ball was really nice too. Mm-hmm. The, like that outfit he wears, it's got like writing on it. That's a pretty yeah. cool outfit. Yeah, yeah. Did you like that they said our catchphrase in that scene though, when they were both like, "I love you." <laughs> That's our catchphrase. Mm-hmm. Well, they also said, what "Yes, I super pick you," but you know, no wonder we're God's f- favorite uh, freaking podcast. Exactly. Uh, he William heads to Benj Frankman's. No, he heads to the Congress where Benj Frankman is and a bunch of other people. He kicks in the door and everyone's like, hey, there's that murderer. Let's stop him. <laughs> but he beats a couple of guards to death. And while he's beating up the guards, Benj, <laughs> Benj Frankman is like, oh. Like, this is the scene where he's kind of like turned on by William beating up the guards. He's like, oh, okay. Like, you see him like, oh, getting his eyebrows up. And that's not the only thing getting Benj- up. I think Benjamin Franklin is playing the fool a couple... Because for a couple of lines, he's like, Hey, I know you. And then he pops into frame again, and he's like, What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good point. He's just kind of like, Do you goofing. not remember this person that used to uh, work for your paper? That for... worked for you for months from the sounds of it. And was a vigilante? And yeah. like... <laughs> hey, I know you. <laughs> what, what line is that? <laughs> so then... William beats two guards to death and then runs down into the basement and nobody tries to stop him. In fact, the first people to follow him into the basement are Benj Frankman and some other guy with, like, bad work guards. Why didn't the guards go in after this murderer? But fine. He finds... the Samoan guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So William finds a bunch of barrels filled with gunpowder and they're like, 
oh, this gunpowder. Where this gunpowder comes from? And he goes, oh, uh, uh, a lot of gunpowder. And a lot. He goes, this is from Charles Kemp from the East India Company. And everyone goes, oh, okay. Instead of going, well, <laughs> prove that. You can't just yeah. say that it was him. <laughs> they can't just, that doesn't hold up. But I guess it does. I mean, Charles Kemp should have had somebody there immediately go, you did this. Yeah. Oh, the murderer. Just like the knifing. Yeah, like, <laughs> you found these barrels of, of gunpowder in the basement of the Congress. What a coincidence that you, oh. a murderer, also found this, unfoiled this plot to blow up and kill a bunch of people. That's just, what a weird coincidence that, that happened. Yeah. Get this man to jail. Right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Hang him. Kill, kill this man. He's he's a murderer. <laughs> It would have been funny if uh, Charlotte gets picked up right away, but then uh, William gets picked up right away on like the <laughs> other side of the street. Yeah, he turns the corner, and then he's just like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> and they never find out. They both just get hung separately and are like, well, at least that other yeah. person got away. And then there's just a split screen of them both being hung in different cities. And you go, well, all's well yeah. that ends well, I guess. Philadelphia just burning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> in the background. It, we're like an hour 15 into this already. Should we just fast forward through this ending? Because the ending is whatever. This is the end. Yeah. So they get to the windmill where... I, whatever. Charles Camp, he rigged up the whole city of Philadelphia through the sewers to blow up with this elaborate contraption that's like generates electricity from the windmill and then it charges these jars and then the jars charge a thing and when he flips the switch it shoots electricity down these wires that ignite these barrels of gunpowder in all these strategic places and they're going to blow up Philadelphia to stop the signing of the Declaration of Independence and, and then he doesn't <laughs> instead he gets electrocuted <laughs> for his troubles so there you go Charlotte kind of turns into a bit of a boss at the end but kinda. i think it's a little too little too late like she really should have been cooler previous to this instead of just falling into lakes well uh, yeah well that's true but i also love that like yes they kind of make her into a bit of a badass at the end but then when she's when, when like william's like you need to go flip that switch next to your uncle and she goes over to flip the switch and he just like roundhouse elbows her in the face and knocks her out and it's like bye <laughs> Like you're not Let doing out. that. Yeah, it just knocks her right out. Laser out, done. Okay, uh, so to stop this machine, all they have to do is stick some metal or their hand into these wires. Yep. And uh, William kind of kind of fakes towards it, and then Charles like lunges back with a sword, but then William just like gets out of the way, and Charles electrifies himself and blows up the machine. Yeah, Charles is John Reese Davies, by the way. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, somehow, for for no reason, like, with the amount of force he put into that stab, even if he had stabbed William, he still would have ended up in the machine getting electrocuted. Like, just, He's a big guy. That's a lot of force. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he dies. And then the whole windmill and the boat that's underneath the water with an elevator connecting the two, somehow, that, they invented an elevator, I guess. All of that yeah. blows up. But Elevator. William and what's her name, Shaolin, escape and they run away yeah. from an exploding windmill, and that's the climactic scene. Is that runaway slow motion? Did they like touch that up at all, or do they just run away from the explosion and get wet? What do you mean, touch that up? What do you mean? Well, did they slow it down, add some cool music, or oh, are yeah, they yeah, just yeah. running away? No, no, no. It's like, oh, it's like the shot where he jumps over the roof in Philly. There's like weird, like, oh, yeah, yeah. And so they jump in the water, and then he gets out of the water and is immediately arrested, rightfully so. Yeah, wet. Of course, soaking wet. And They're both uh, so wet. <laughs> yes. And then, uh, but luckily the Declaration of Independence was signed, so America's a country now. Huzzah! Yes, despite them being wet. Mm -hmm. They're totally wet, both of them, just wet. And they also but have... They have no proof that her uncle did any of this, and everyone connected in it has been incinerated. So the only people that made it out of this, the only people connected to this still are William and Shaolin. William, a known murderer that everyone thinks is a murderer, and Shaolin, the woman who helped him escape from jail. So <laughs> he rightfully gets arrested. <laughs> like, of course. Yeah, and Benji Franklin kind of knows what's going on, but I think he's losing it a bit. 
Mm -hmm, absolutely he's cracking up and then as they're riding away a note from ben frankman falls into the jail into like the jail car and the note is basically like hey brother i know that you didn't do it so you're not going to jail you're coming to my place where you're going to join my avengers initiative the end and the flipping end (laughs) yeah william joins the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, apparently, or something like that. I'm not sure what he's joining, but he teams up with Ben Franklin for more shady missions. Do you think that Benjamin Franklin thought that he had a chance with William? He might have. Yeah, he he didn't. When the note, when he wrote that note, he didn't know that what's her name was going to that Shaolin was going to be in no. the carriage with him. So and like that, William would have just proposed to her and put a giant ring on her finger. Yeah. So like, hey, come back to my place and chill out for a bit. Yeah, you know, have a bath. I'll rub your back and like, you know, there's some clothes here, but they might be a little too tight on you. If they don't fit, then it's okay. Just leave your britches on and lounge on on this Barca lounger. <laughs> and he's like, Barclay That's... lounger. Exactly, this Charles Barclay lounger. What did you think of Beyond the Mask? Um, I thought it was Beyond the Meat. That mm-hmm. is for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, like. For a movie trying to be a good movie, um, I thought it was decent. For a movie like we, trying to be a good movie, high we've praise. We've seen a lot of junkers, mm-hmm. as you would say. And this movie was entertaining. I got into this movie. I I think something's wrong with me in the head, though, because I did start looking at my phone. My attention yeah. span is totally fricked. It happens, man. Don't even worry about it. I'm with uh, you though. Society, man. Yeah, we live in a society, <laughs> as Jared Leto's Joker would say. So, out of ten lids, I would give this nine and a half. <laughs> That's a lot of lids. Like the yeah. the hat clothing store, like the store itself, or you're just talking about hats. Um, mm, I was talking more about pills. Oh, okay, that's cool. I would. <laughs> I'm all about the Frankemans, so I'd probably give it ten bench Frankemans out of ten. I like this movie a lot. I yeah. watched the new Mortal Kombat yesterday, and it sucked butts. It was oh, awful. Sorry, spoiler alert. That. It sucked. This movie I was, was so excited for you. It was garbage. This movie is so much more entertaining than the new Mortal Kombat. That's the highest praise I can give it. I I found it legitimately entertained. Like yeah. I was sucked into what was happening. Yeah, it kind of fricks itself from here to there. But yeah, yeah. overall, you gotta frick yourself to feel good. And here's the thing: if you don't trust our opinion, just recognize that yes, I super picky. And if it comes right down to it, yes, I super picky. I love you. I love you. We, we love, love you. you. Pure, pure, pure boys podcast. You open your app, then that's a good one. To us, yeah. On and on, on and, and on. on. Talking Christian movies, cause it's just the pure, we love pure, it. pure, pure boys podcast. <laughs> pure, pure, pure. Oh, listeners, wait till podcast. you hear what we got next week for you. Oh my god. Pure, pure, it's pure, pure boys podcast. podcast. Oh. You don't even know what's coming at you, but <laughs> May is going to be crazy. <laughs>